Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks for joining us tonight. Marcellus will be reading this evening's story, which is about a young traveller who finds a sense of calm and inner balance during a rainforest retreat. Let's get nice and settled, ready for tonight's story. When you're cozy and comfortable in bed, allow your eyes to gently close and take a deep breath in through the nose. Then, slowly out letting your muscles loosen and relax. As you repeat that relaxed rhythm of breathing, giving your body a chance to transition into the calm of night, I'd like you to think about the positive impact of your care, kindness, and compassion I'm reminding you because I think we all have times where we forget just how important and valuable our kindness can be. I've spoken to friends at times when they're feeling low on purpose and direction in their lives, and I've felt that way myself plenty of times too. But one thing I try to remind myself of and anyone I'm supporting, is that the way we are as people, the way we act towards others, and the good deeds and moments of kindness we share with the world, really are so impactful. Not only do they directly impact those closest to us, but these moments of positive interaction can be exponentially far-reaching. Just think about it. If someone is feeling at a loss, perhaps they're feeling bad about themselves or about the way other people have treated them, your moment of kindness and support could be just what they need. And by acting with kindness and compassion, you'll feel better about yourself, and it can begin a domino effect. The next time that person sees or speaks to someone in need, perhaps they will feel inspired by your words, or simply by your kind nature and they will be more likely to spread that same positivity to others. And so, the cycle continues. It can be easy to feel like our place in the world is limited or confined to a small portion of it. But I challenge you to think openly Think big and be absolutely assured that your small acts of kindness and compassion hold the power to impact many, many lives. So take one more of those big, deep breaths. And as you exhale, reassure yourself that you have the power to make a difference. As you continue making your way to sleep, you can just listen to our story in the background. We'll be joining a traveler named Jeremiah, who has just made his way into the Mexican rainforest for a relaxing adventure. (laughs) 
Jeremiah has just arrived at a rainforest retreat. With his backpack still strapped to his shoulders, he's ready for new experiences. His sense of adventure brought him to the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, where he plans to explore the coastline in all its natural glory. He will hike with friends, take long bike rides at sunset, and snorkel with tropical sea creatures. Before his adventure begins, though, Jeremiah is going to relax. His number one priority is calming his mind before heading off into the unknown. After checking into his resort, he walks up to the concierge, a friendly young man in a white linen shirt and tan pants. Luckily, the resort has a world-renowned spa. He asks the concierge if he can book a treatment. I will schedule a water journey for you, replies the young man, smiling kindly. Jeremiah likes the sound of this. A water journey sounds so simple, yet delightful, he thinks. Then he recalls a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Jeremiah takes the first available appointment. The timing is perfect. It allows him to find his room, drop off his backpack, and arrange his belongings in his temporary home. The concierge was very specific with his instructions for the water journey. He told Jeremiah to wear comfortable swimwear and the white robe he finds in his room. Once unpacked and changed, Jeremiah makes his way to the spa. He walks through a tall glass door and is met by the scent of eucalyptus. He breathes it in, filling his lungs with the soothing fragrance. Then he looks around, taking in the space. The walls are painted in muted earth tones, and the flooring is made of stranded bamboo. There is a small stream with rocks flowing right through the middle of the reception area. The sound of gentle water dancing over the rocks is like a tranquil lullaby. Jeremiah has been in plenty of spas before, but this one might be the most inviting of them all. At the reception desk stands a woman with dark brown eyes and chestnut hair pulled into a sleek bun. She's dressed in an elegant white uniform. She greets Jeremiah with a warm smile and introduces herself as Rosa. She will be his water journey guide for the day. Rosa offers Jeremiah a tiny glass of green liquid, presented on a silver tray. She explains it's a room temperature tea, specially formulated for relaxation. Jeremiah takes a sip from the tiny glass. It tastes like cucumber and mint, with a dash of something sweet he can't pinpoint. He finishes the drink and sets the empty glass on the tray. Smiling, Rosa tells Jeremiah to follow her. 
They walked down a hallway and through an ornately carved door. On the way, Jeremiah listens to the soft soundtrack playing on overhead speakers. He appreciates the sound of nature, a symphony of chirps woven together with a peaceful rustling of leaves. The water journey officially begins in a softly lit area. Rosa now talks in a much quieter voice, even though no one else is around. She tells Jeremiah that his journey will start in the sauna. From a nearby cabinet, she collects a misting bottle labeled lemongrass water, then guides Jeremiah inside a glass enclosure. The interior is made entirely of cedar wood planks and smells fresh and woodsy. There are three empty benches in front of him. Jeremiah chooses the one in the center and Rosa drapes a long white towel over it. Jeremiah lies on top, face up, and makes himself comfortable. He soon begins to feel the heat of the sauna against his bare skin. Taking a deep, slow breath in, Jeremiah notices the heat of the air entering his nose. He likes the warm feeling. He closes his eyes so that Rosa can place a cool, wet cloth over them. She asks him if he would like a lemongrass, miss. He smiles and thanks her, and she spritzes the mist over him. It's wonderfully refreshing and smells divine, like sweet herbs mixed with crisp citrus fruit. Rosa then tells Jeremiah that she will return in a few minutes. She leaves the bottle of lemongrass mist next to him in case he wants another spritz. He lies there and relaxes, enjoying the warmth and peaceful sounds of a tropical rainforest. Later, Rosa comes back and lightly taps Jeremiah on his arm. When she asks him how he feels, he doesn't need to answer with words. His wide, relaxed grin says it all. He removes the cool cloth from his eyes to discover he is being presented with another tiny glass of liquid on a silver tray. This time, the liquid is orange in color. Rosa says it's tangerine ginger-infused water. Jeremiah drinks it all, enjoying the sensation it gives him as it cools his throat. This refreshing feeling then spreads right through his body. He stands and Rosa picks up the lemongrass misting bottle. She points the nozzle and sends two puffs of the mist into the air. Jeremiah intuitively walks through the lemongrass cloud, breathing in the fragrance again. It brings him a burst of happiness. Rosa then motions for him to follow her to another room. Light blue iridescent tiles the size of coins cover the floor, walls, ceiling, and even the built-in seating. In the center of the room, 
there is a large glass bowl on a pedestal. The bowl is filled with ice. Jeremiah takes a seat and watches Rosa unfold a small damp cloth made of cotton. She sets the cloth next to him, then scoops some ice into her hands. Gently, she places the ice in the middle of the cloth, then folds the corners of the fabric around the ice, twisting the top. The creation reminds Jeremiah of foil-wrapped chocolates. Just then, Rosa calls it an ice kiss, as if she was reading his thoughts. She hands him the ice kiss, then explains the exfoliation benefits of cool textured cloth on skin. She tells him she'll return in a little while. Jeremiah presses the ice kiss against his shoulder and slowly glides it down his arm to his wrist. Since his body is already warmed from the sauna, it's invigorating and not as cold as he expected. He repeats this with his other arm and then the back of his neck. When he is done, the ice kiss is almost completely melted in his hand, leaving him with an empty wet cloth. He puts the cloth on top of his head, relishing the cool sensation. A moment later, Rosa reappears with a small saucer of aloe vera gel. She encourages Jeremiah to apply the gel liberally to his skin, which he does with both hands. The gel provides a lovely contrast after the texture of the cool cloth. Rosa gives him a few more minutes to himself, then reappears with another tiny glass of liquid on the silver tray. This time, the liquid is a deep red. It's strawberry cinnamon water, according to Rosa, and it's a combination of flavors Jeremiah has never tried before. He gladly drinks the concoction and decides it's his favorite one so far. Now it's time for another room, the steam room. This part of the journey includes a special treatment for Jeremiah's face. Rosa presents him with a jar of light brown clay. She uses gestures to explain the process, pretending to dip her fingers into the jar, then swiping her own face. He takes his cue and scoops out some of the substance, rubbing it onto his forehead, cheeks, and chin. It smells surprisingly fruity. Rosa explains the facial mass is made of pomegranate, which is full of antioxidants. This explains the fragrance. The substance is also mixed with sea kelp, which is why it has this distinctive pale brown color. Jeremiah lets the mask soak into his skin and ask himself, why haven't I tried this before? He imagines that he can already feel his skin relaxing and getting softer. The steam room is very dark, 
the layout is almost identical to the ice room. Yet the coin-sized tiles are navy blue, and there are twinkling lights in the ceiling, mimicking stars. The temperature in the steam room is similar to the temperature of the sauna, but it feels so different. The sauna was dry, whereas the steam room is anything but. Rosa spreads a fresh white towel over a tiled lounge chair. Jeremiah lies down on the towel and closes his eyes. Next, Rosa places two cucumber slices on top of his eyelids and whispers that she will retrieve him in a few minutes. He takes that time to reflect and clear his mind some more. The face mask is starting to tingle ever so slightly. It's nice to feel pampered, he decides, breathing in the gentle steam wafting about in the room. Rosa soon returns entering the steam room with yet another small glass of liquid on the silver tray. It's pink this time, delicious hibiscus lemonade. Once Jeremiah has placed his empty glass on the tray, Rosa motions for him to follow her. They go into a white-toweled room. Above, Spaced a few feet apart are two rainfall shower hands. Each one has a beaded metal rope dangling nearby. Rosa says the shower on the left will be invigorating and cool, while the one on the right will be warm and toasty. She tells Jeremiah that he doesn't need to choose one over the other. He can and should try them both. The cool shower is great for rinsing off the aloe vera gel and facial mask, while the warm shower offers comfort. It's so comforting, in fact, that Jeremiah takes his time savoring the heat. But there's no rush, and Rosa is happy to wait outside until he's ready to continue. After the rainfall shower room, Rosa offers Jeremiah a small glass of peach tea and a soft cranberry orange cookie. He pops the cookie into his mouth, eating it in a single bite. It's unbelievable how much flavor such a small treat can hold. He grins like a child, remembering the cranberry muffins his grandmother used to make around holiday time. Rosa smiles at Jeremiah and once again tells him to follow her to a new area. This is the second to last room and the smallest one yet. However, it represents the best of each of the previous rooms. The floors are cedar like in the sauna. In the center of the room, there's a tiled lounger, like in the ice kiss room. Only this time, the lounger is a shiny beige color. There are twinkling stars embedded in the ceiling, like in the steam room, and the temperature is ideal. Rosa places a dry towel 
on the tiled lounger. This lounge chair is shaped a bit differently than the other ones Jeremiah has tried. This one was specifically designed with zero gravity in mind to alleviate pressure in certain areas, like the lower back. Jeremiah knows what to do. He lies down and instantly feels a pleasant warmth. The tiles of this lounger are heated. Rosa sets a delicate lavender pillow across his eyes and gives him a gentle scalp massage for a few minutes. Then, she places a light, soft blanket over him and says that she'll return later. During this time, Jeremiah feels his body enter a deeper state of relaxation. He rests his hands just under his chest, his fingers interlaced, sinking into the lounger. He somehow feels heavy, yet light and feathery at the same time. For once, there are no thoughts in his mind. All he can feel is tranquility. And all he can imagine is peace. Glad he has no plans for the evening. Jeremiah can truly relax now, savoring this time to himself. He doesn't want it to end. As he lies on the lounger, he continues to do nothing but breathe in and out. Every muscle in his body is loose and free, and even his toes are relaxed. As the minutes pass, Jeremiah feels like he's letting go more and more detached from his everyday routine. Sinking even more deeply into the lounge chair, he takes a full breath in, expanding his chest and stomach. He becomes aware of every sensation as his chest rises and falls with each breath. As he enjoys the subtle little chirps and rustling leaves in the background, his mind is perfectly quiet. He sinks further into relaxation, deeper than he's ever experienced before. Jeremiah could easily fall asleep here, near the end of his water journey. For some reason, however, he doesn't drift off completely. It's as if he's floating on the cusp of being slightly awake while in a cozy hibernation. He welcomes and thoroughly enjoys this dreamy days. Meanwhile, the birds chirp and the leaves rustle some more. He concentrates on the sounds, his breath, and the gentle scent of the lavender pillow on his eyes. There are no thoughts, just serenity. His chest rises with another full, deep breath then falls. Jeremiah lies in stillness. He is so happy and calm in this cherished moment. The only thing he needs to do is breathe. In 
and down. Eventually, Rosa quietly enters the room. She touches Jeremiah's shoulder and asks if he's awake. If she had come in two minutes later, he would have surely fallen asleep. He grins, awakening the muscles in his face, letting Rosa know that he is ready for whatever comes next. She removes the lavender eye pillow from Jeremiah's face with one hand. He is delighted to see the silver tray in her other hand. This time, there's a small ceramic cup filled with green tea next to a granola square covered in dark chocolate. She offers it to him while explaining they are about to enter the last room. Jeremiah nods and enjoys his two treats. Once again, they're delicious. On their way to the last room, Rosa describes it in detail. The room has multiple pools, and this part of the experience comes with unlimited time. Jeremiah's eyes light up at the news. Rosa tells him that he can spend the rest of the day there if he so desires. Entering the final room, Jeremiah sees that there are three tranquil pools. Each one is unique in temperature, shape, and water features. With a twinkle in her eye, Rosa tells Jeremiah the pools are like a magical fairy tale. When she sees that Jeremiah is curious to know more, she explains. Some say the plunge pool is too cold. The whirlpool to some is too hot. But the last pool where you can enjoy a waterfall and a back massage feature is just right. Jeremiah can try all three, or just one, or two. It's completely up to him. Jeremiah weighs his options and decides the just right pool is where he'll start. And maybe he'll end there too if it's as wonderful as it looks. Rosa leaves him to enjoy his time alone. Jeremiah slowly enters the pool, fully submerging his body. The water must be the same temperature as he is. He swims over to the back massage feature. Thick streams of water flow from multiple spouts. He presses his back into the therapeutic feature and closes his eyes. After reveling in the sensation for a few moments, he decides a lap or two might be nice. Nothing too strenuous. It feels good to move his arms and legs through the water. The resistance is calming and reminds Jeremiah to slow down, not just in the pool, but in life. He turns over and floats on his back for a bit. With his ears underwater, He can no longer hear the birds chirping or the leaves rustling. He can only hear himself breathe in and out. Jeremiah floats lazily, 
moving his hands and feet back and forth in the just right water, appreciating the solitude. There is no one else around. He has the entire space to himself. It really is just right, like the fairy tale. It's a reminder that everything in life requires a delicate balance. As he drifts slowly through the water, he remains aware of his relaxed breathing. In and out. In and out. And in this moment, Jeremiah knows that he has found more than peace and tranquility. He's also found the perfect balance in mind and body, floating peacefully. He smiles at this realization. His travels have only just begun, but he's already made a precious discovery that will stay with him forever. Forever.